Hi, my name is Merle, in case you're new here, and welcome to my channel. It is once again time for a new custom doll. One of my favorite fashion eras is the 80s new romantics. It's over the top, it's roughly, slightly fantasy inspired, and totally up my alley. So let's get started. I start by drawing a quick sketch of what I want to create, which I didn't uh, actually ended up using. I ended up with a design like this. After I was finally finished with pattern drafting, I traced the pattern onto the dress top onto this beautiful black damask fabric. This design definitely needs a heart, so I iron on double-sided fusing onto the back side of this velvet to then be able to cut out the heart with some seam allowance to have a clean edge. To give the heart more pizzazz, I pull out some embroidery floss, metallic lace, and golden metal beads. So let's start the slow and very long process of embroidering. I attach the lace first. From there, I stitch red, somehow managed to embroider a rose, add a tiny leaf, stitch the heart to the top, sew the metal beads around the heart and other marked locations. And lastly, I added these starish stitches around the beads. After I was finally satisfied with the result, I cut out the pattern pieces so then sew the princess seams together. Because darker fabrics can stain the resin bodies of BDGs, I decided to line up most of her dress with light pink mesh. To then try to use editing magic to add it together, which didn't work out because I forgot to film this part. Over on Instagram, I asked you in a poll which fabric I should use for the sleeve. I ended up with a tie between the left and the right option, uh, but uh, I went with the middle option because I forgot to uh, add that to the poll and I liked it best. <laughs> Sorry. Once again, I start by tracing the pattern onto my damask fabric and mark where I want to add all the embroidery. After an eternity, I was finally done with one sleeve. So let's use editing magic to have the second one. Now just the cuffs are missing for the sleeve. I start with another rows, leaves, and bead details. Before sewing the sleeves together, I add again the light pink mesh to avoid any staining. And voila, these sleeves are gorgeous. And lined. Sometimes I put a ton of effort into something and it just doesn't look right. But luckily this time, the hard work really paid off. Next victim, the tool skirt. I quickly gather the double circle skirts to then sew all the pieces together in the skirt. I hate working with tool. I just, <laughs> I feel no joy working with tool. Now that the tool underskirt is done, I can continue with the velvet layer. I cut out two circles that I cut open to make a double circle skirt to have more of a volume. I sew both seams together, but leaving an opening to be able to put it on the doll. I hang up the skirt to stretch it out before continuing on to sew the hemline with the help of paper. Now that the skirt is done, I can attach the top to the skirt. To add more extravagance to the skirt, I decided to sew this antique metal lace around the skirt's hemline with editing magic. Yes, it worked, but the skirt is still too plain. How about we add another round of more embroidery? For the closure of the neck piece of the dress, I add this embroidery floss like so and attach some beads to it at the end of the string. Now we can move on to the wig. I was gifted this goat hair a while ago and I thought it would look really, really beautiful as a contrast to the overall design instead of making the wig in black. Plus, I love the texture. I separate the waft, brush them out, and I find using my mini flat iron and cutting off the edges straight, it worked best for gluing on to the wig cap later which I made off screen. I work my way around the head in a spiral until I get to the parting, which I forgot to film. <clears throat> and the wig is done and is my best one quality wise so far if you ask me. For this custom doll, I decided to use her high heel feet option this time. I started by wrapping her feet in saran wrap, glue paper soles to the bottom of her feet and then be able to mold this foam clay around her feet. Let's wrap the foam with velvet. It's starting to look nicer. From there, I add this faux fur leather to the sole of the shoes. I clean up the edge by gluing embroidery floss around it. To make it more cohesive, I also add this embroidery to the velvet. Lucky was able to stitch through the foam clay to accomplish this. Now we're only missing the face up. 
So let's go over to Marika. With a base of three layers of MSC, she was then able to start blushing the face and sketching up the eyes. Slowly, Marika built up the layers of deepening the colors. Lastly, she added acrylic paint to deepen the colors and make them pop more. And of course, some micro glitters weren't missing. And with this, we're finally ready for a reveal. so much i love the untamely hair because i really like that about the new romantic and the trad goth scene how it has this hair and i think she turned out really really nice all the little details i was able to put in her and i hope you had a lot of fun watching this video i put a lot of love in this little babe if you made it to this part of the video thank you so much Please consider subscribing, maybe leave a like, maybe leave a comment what you thought of this doll. And I hope to see you soon in another video. You can also create a magic babe of your own because I have a few garage kits left on my Etsy shop. So if you like, you can go and click on my link in the description and check her out. Una and I wish you a beautiful day and I hope to see you in my next video. See you soon. Bye.